guys welcome back to another video and this is another um, NBA reaction and this is going on for my last video reaction which was on Carmelo Anthony his like highlights from his 2014-2017 stint at the at the Knicks and this one is how good was prime Carmelo Anthony actually I was going to initially do this in the same video but because they're both relatively long I decided I was going to split them so for those who come in from the second channel or from the main channel hopefully you guys are going to enjoy please subscribe if you haven't already and for those in the second channel, thanks for the support on this, man. It's just going off. I can't believe there's so many people watching the, the videos on this channel. And I'm loving the, the sort of the community that we're building here as well. Like, it's a good sort of... Like, we've got the main channel where we post sort of the videos that, um, that like, certain people want to see. But the second channel is, like, where the random videos come. And people are still watching them. So I really do thank you for that because it's, it's different. And I, wasn't, I just wasn't expecting this sort of support. So thanks for that, genuinely. It means a lot. And with this one, Andy Hoops. Let's check this out, man. He's a channel that people have told me to look at in the past. And I'm just excited, man, because, again, people tell me he's a good channel. And doing a video on Carmelo Anthony, I'm intrigued to see, like, what, why he was so loved, basically. Like, I saw clips of the video, of his highlights, and he was crazy. But I want to see more about him, like, and maybe as a person, and maybe his career, and just see, like, what he won. Maybe he didn't win anything. Like, just, like, sort of the stats that he has, etc. So let's check this out and see, see what he's about, man. Hands of Anthony. Anthony for three. Puts it in. He loves a clutch shot. Ah, Carmelo Anthony, one of the greatest scorers of his generation. The smoothness of his jump shots, the notoriety of his iconic jab step, the loudness it, of his screams every time he gets a rebound. Take advantage of. <laughs> Melo is and was a truly unique and unorthodox player. On one end, he's known as a fantastic scorer back in his prime one of the most pleasing players to watch in the history of the game. On the other hand, he's known for his lackadaisical defense, okay. his selfishness, and his inability to carry his teams <laughs> deeper into the playoffs. Prime Mello was a spectacle to watch, but there were unquestionably some negative aspects of his game that were observed under a microscope. And perhaps, in recent years, towards the end of his career, he's gotten more flack than most other waning stars. How's it going folks? My name's Andy, and today, let's talk about Prime Mello. How good was he actually? What years were considered his prime? And what are the misconceptions that surround this bona fide superstar? Looks but like before I start, oh, I'd like to- Get your money bro, get your money. I'm this. <laughs> video. First, we gotta define when Melo was actually in his prime. He's I'm had a few seasons this. where he played at his absolute peak, but generally speaking, I'd say his prime ranges between 2006 and 2014. Okay. But so that video that I did was actually not really on his prime, so that's my bad. Between the ages of 21 and 29. These were his 8 or 9 seasons where he was at his best, on an individual basis, he matched up very well with his peers, especially LeBron James. Oh, wow. Overall, prime LeBron was clearly the superior player, but when they went head-to-head, -head, it was always quite intense. From 03 until 2012, Melo had a winning record versus LeBron in head-to-head -head matchups, Jesus. with 9 wins and 6 losses. What made him special was that he was incredibly versatile with his scoring arsenal. He could take you off the dribble, shoot a pull-up jumper in your face, go into his triple threat position and lull you to sleep with his 5 billion jab steps. He could shoot threes, although not amazingly, but good enough to the point where you can't just leave him open and go under screens. He had the fadeaway, the drop step, and the spin moves. Offensively, there was nothing he couldn't do. Well, except for passing. <laughs> For a long time, there was a huge discussion about who was the better scorer, Prime Melo or Prime LeBron. It usually came down to the fact that LeBron was the more efficient scorer, okay. but Melo had such a wide array of different moves that made him nearly impossible to guard, as he was a threat to score regardless of where he was on the floor. From 2006 until 2014, he averaged over 26 points per game, what? over 6 rebounds, 3 assists, on good percentages. For 8 years! But maybe the more impressive part is that he led his teams to the playoffs for 10 consecutive Jesus seasons. Jesus Christ. 
One of the biggest misconceptions is that he wasn't a team player, but it's not like his teams were losing. They were doing very well. Right when he came into the NBA, he was the major factor in turning around the Nuggets franchise. Okay. Previously, they were a bottom-dwelling team, winning only 17 games in the year before he got drafted. Unfortunately, in seven full seasons in Denver, they only managed to get out of the first round once. That was in 2009, where Chauncey Billups was the best player on the team, not Melo. That's another thing. Over the years, when people look back at Melo's time in Denver, it's a mixed bag. Some blame him for not adapting or being too selfish, and he's the reason that his teams were held back. Others believe he entered the league at a bad time. The Western Conference was at the strongest it's ever been. While the Nuggets were a great team, they had a ridiculously tough matchup in every round. They simply weren't as good as the Spurs or Lakers, who eliminated Melo's Nuggets. Spurs and Lakers, that's unfortunate, man. You're up against two of the great, like, some of the, possibly the best teams at that moment. It's in four of their seven playoff runs. However, if you dive deeper into the stats, maybe a huge portion of the blame should go to Melo. What the in fuck? In his is seven there? seasons in Denver, Melo only fuck? led his team in win shares just once. Oh, man. That was in the 2005 to 6 season. In every other season, someone else on his team was the leader in win shares. Now, I know win shares is not the perfect stat, but it does take into account his value to the team. Statistically, they were not much better with him on the floor versus him on the bench. Jesus Christ. In fact, from 2007 to 2010, the Nuggets had a better offensive and defensive rating without Melo. The numbers were close, but Melo stagnated the offense when he was on the floor, largely due to his pitiful assist rate. The offense flowed much better with other players getting more touches, like Nene, or Billups, or even J.R. Smith, who, <laughs> believe it or not, didn't hog the ball nearly as much as Melo. The meme, Basically, so. despite all the playoff appearances, there were serious flaws with Melo's game. And these flaws would carry over to the New York Knicks. Okay. In an article from The Cauldron, Dan Favale explains Melo's demeanor pretty well here. He stated, He seems overtly aware of his reputation, yet he's self-defeating in the way he seemingly prioritized money over everything else. He is generally recognized as a superstar, yet there is still a widely held belief that he's not good enough, not worthy enough, not interested enough regardless of his on-court brilliance. Melo could have joined the Knicks during the 2011 offseason when he was a free agent, but instead, he wanted to be traded there in the middle of the season. Partly because he wanted to sign an early three-year extension, which allows the Knicks to sign him to an even bigger contract later in 2014, oh. due to having Melo's bird rights. And this eventually did happen. It's also partly because the Knicks felt threatened that Melo would sign with their rivals, the Nets. So they pulled the trigger on this massive trade, which saw them give up a ton of quality young players and assets. Jesus Christ. So they actually, like, it, it shows that he was, like, very, very, like, oh, what's the word? Not, well, one, it is the word, but, like, he was sort of, he was sought after, like, they're giving away good prospects to get him in his prime. Back to bite them, but for now, the Knicks retooled their team around Melo. By the 2012-13 season, Mello would have the greatest season of his entire career. Oh, wow. He led the league in scoring with a career-high 28.7 points a game. He developed into a great leader. Vocally, he was more active than any other season of his career. Not only that, but he also moved to power forward and dominated his new position. We saw Mello take on a true leadership role on a team that was very old. In fact, the Knicks were the third oldest team in the league, with an average age of 30.2. Oh, wow. But with old. age comes experience. When it comes to pace, the Knicks dropped from 5th to 26th. Coach Mike Woodson implemented a more methodical approach offensively, since it suited their cast of older players better. As a result, the Knicks won 54 games and grabbed the second seed in the Eastern okay. Conference. This Knicks-Heat playoff matchup was heavily anticipated, as they were expected to meet in the conference finals. 
However, in the second round, it all came crashing down. In arguably the most sluggish series of the playoffs, the Knicks fell in six games. Mello was the only good Knicks player in the series, but that was the Pacers' plan. They let Mello play one-on-one -on -one while shutting down everyone else. It worked because he got tired and he can't score every single time. Unsurprisingly, the Knicks would not make the playoffs again for the rest of. So what I'm getting is they were a bit too reliable on him. Like they relied on him, but then maybe they relied on, relied on him a bit too the much. The Carmelo Anthony era. This roster of players was simply unsustainable because they were way too old. Jason Kidd was 39 years old and retired right after the season. Rashid Wallace and Marcus Camby were 38 and oh, also me. retired. Kurt Thomas was 40 and he retired too. Kenyon old? Martin was at the twilight of his career, also retiring two years later. Tyson Chandler was on the downswing of his career and rapidly fell off. And Amari Stoudemire's knees exploded and he never recovered. Fuck me, so he had a really, really old team. I, I, when he said old, I didn't expect that old. That is nuts. After this, Melo continued to play at an elite level for the next few years, but by the age of 30, his prime was over. So how good was Prime Melo actually? Well, certainly a top 10 player for a few years in Denver. A top 5 player with the 2013 New York Knicks. Oh, wow. Arguably a top 10 small forward of all time. Jesus Certainly Christ. a Hall of Famer. But at the same time, his tunnel vision and his unwillingness to pass the ball would be a detriment to his own team. In Denver and in New York, his teams would routinely finish in the bottom 10 in assists. His efficiency as an ISO player did not make up for the lack of ball movement. This would change as he got older though, as he slowly became a more willing passer. But at that point, it was too late. Defensively, oh boy, it was a nightmare. His reputation of being a poor defender never went away, and as he got older, it became even worse. Funny enough, Mello probably calls out more defensive rotations and telling teammates where to go more often than actually rotating himself. 20 or 30 years from now, fans will look back at Mello in the same vein as we look back today at a guy like Dominique Wilkins. An absurdly talented scorer, but heavily flawed in other areas. As a result, both of them struggled to have playoff success, cause opposing teams always took advantage of their flaws. I think it's a fair historical comparison. Anyway, that's all folks. That sums up how good Prime Mello actually was. Interesting though. Let me know your thoughts on him and where would you rank him all time? Do you also think he's a top 10 small forward ever? Do you think he truly reached his full potential? Let me know in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. And as always, I'll see you next time. Interesting. So what I gather from this is what he was good at, he was insanely good at. Like one of the best in the league from like his shooting and like other areas he was very good at. But then on the flip side, he was the things that he was poor at, he was very bad at. So I guess it's like a catch-22. But like... From like what I see, like he, like especially at the Knicks, that team was so old. And the fact that he had comparisons with LeBron at certain points really goes to show how good he really was. But I mean, to have a team of like two 39-year-olds, a 40-year-old, like a 38-year-old, someone like, like, like two people are, who are like at the later stages of their career, people with injuries and things like that, like it's going to be tough. So I do feel from in that case, but he's still gone on to have, have an insane career and people still... From like what I see, people really love him. So I, I, I do like that, what, like what I see. It's just maybe, uh, it, it really goes to show how hard it really is to win a ring, to win the NBA championship, man. Because like the finals are so hard to get to. And I think he got to, con the, to the conference final once with the Nuggets, and that was it. So I mean, it does show how difficult it really is. But nevertheless, though, it's still interesting to see this perspective. The thing with Melo is that he could have easily averaged six, seven assists a game if he wanted to because he actually was a good passer, he's just not a willing one. I see that man. So like he could like he was he wasn't bad at passing, he just sort of had the mentality that he wanted to sort of be the main guy, he wanted to be the scorer. And I do see that. Some players do have that. But it's good to have sort of a mix, not just being one wanting to score, being the one who wants to score. I'm surprised Melo's Olymp Olympic resume wasn't mentioned here, pretty historic. 
If Melo got drafted by the Pistons, imagine Melo, who, would, who doesn't need to worry about playing D and Pistons getting a score like Melo. Clock winds down to five seconds left in the game. Ball inbounded to Carmelo, who faces, who's face to face against LeBron. You took my family, moves to the left. You took my friends, moves to the right. You took all that was dear to me. Clock winds down to two. I can't get them back, but I can do this a friendship for my friends. Goes up, fire coming out of his shoes. <laughs> Carmelo Rukin, Carmelo Rukin. <laughs> Ball flies over LeBron's head, goes straight into the basket. Carmelo falls to the ground, exhausted. Shupa, senpai, I. Fates, final score, Cavs, <laughs> Cavs 103, Knicks fucking 63. Fuck's sake, if that actually happened, I'm screaming. Is that a real score? Like, obviously, I know this is like to do with anime and shit, but if this is a real score, I'm screaming. How good was Mike Bibby, the underrated point guard who gave 20 and 5 in his prime in the in 2000s? Let me tell you about the young'uns. Let me tell all them young'uns that now that. Melo was a damn sniper. That man was a great overall scorer. Still, man, I really enjoyed this. And I thank you guys for getting me into reaction to him because these kinds of players I probably wouldn't look deep into because I see him now and he's a lot older. He's 36. And he still does his thing. Like, he's still an efficient player. But, like, I obviously didn't initially understand how much of a legend he really was. And now I sort of realise that. It does make it interesting seeing him playing with players like Dame, etc., and seeing still that he's still performing, but you sort of compare him to LeBron. LeBron's 35, and he's still one of the best players in the league, if not the best. Like we're seeing in the playoffs, LeBron has just been crazy. He's obviously still a good player, Carmelo Anthony, but he's not like sort of kept up the same sort of speed. His career's obviously went down slower, which is, is just really just sort of makes you appreciate, it makes you appreciate LeBron so much more because he's just a beast, man. But still, interesting video, and I really appreciate the suggestions. And if there's any more sort of highlight videos, or reactions you want me to do to him, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to do so. And until next time, like, subscribe. Peace.